Quickly, Don leaned over one edge of the rocky outcropping that he was sitting on and threw a pine cone down at Grant, followed shortly by another. Grant was covered in pine tar and splinters by that point from all the trees he'd knocked over, but when the pine cones hit him, a look of disappointment slowly started to appear on his face again. It was obvious that after Don had evaded him so cleverly and so well, Grant had been expecting more than an ineffectual attack like that. Still, he seemed to have found the fight fun for a while. By that point, Don could tell that Grant was thinking about the best way to bring him down from the cliff. It was certainly up high enough that he couldn't just reach up with his bare hands or leap to it with his own strength, which meant that he really only had one other option. Quickly, Don got up and prepared to jump again as Grant balled both of his hands up into fists and drove them directly into the solid rock wall, causing huge cracks to form in the rock and dust and debris to fly in all directions. To his dismay, Don could see that the cracks were spreading, causing the rock under his feet to divide into a hundred large chunks and boulders. Under Grant's attack, the cliff was crumbling, and Don knew that he was going to need every bit of his skill at climbing and leaping to escape from the massive avalanche that had suddenly materialized under his feet. But even if he made it all the way to the ground without being crushed by the falling rocks, Don knew that none of it meant a thing as long as Grant could still attack him. If Grant was still able to attack once Don made it to the ground, there was no way that he could have defended himself, even at his best. As quickly as he could, Don scrambled along the falling rocks, trying his best to reach the ground safely. He barely even had a moment to notice that Grant didn't seem to be pursuing him immediately. Getting to the ground before the rocks could reach him, then getting out of range of the avalanche were the most important things at the time. The rocks, though, weren't like tree branches. They didn't just tremble, they rotated. Because of that, not only did Don have to cope with the constantly shifting stones under his feet, but he couldn't afford to rest his full weight on any of them, or for that matter pause for more than half a second. He had to keep moving, and he had to move fast. The task of escaping from the landslide felt like it was going to go on forever, and by the time Don finally reached the ground, his lungs felt like they were about to burst from the exertion. He only took a moment to get his footing back, however, before he started running away from the cliff as fast as he could. However, as Don tried to flee, he felt something large and hard hit him in the back, knocking him to the ground. It was probably one of the rocks that had fallen down during the landslide, but whatever it was, it was so heavy that Don couldn't move it, and he could feel that it was dangerously close to puncturing something inside of him. Regardless, since he couldn't move, Don took one last look towards the cliffside, and there he could see Grant lying on his back, covered in a heap of rocks. A massive boulder lay on top of all those rocks, driving them deep into Grant's flesh, and yet... On his face, there was no sign of any pain, only a relieved grin. L little warrior, Grant gasped out, clearly having trouble breathing. You, you alone, you have beaten me in single combat. I've been waiting for this for a long, long time. I'm, I'm satisfied. Then, with those words, Grant let out one last sigh. And although his eyes remained open, Don could tell that there was no life left in him. Soon, however, something else started to happen, which was even more unexpected. As Don watched in amazement, he could see that Grant's body seemed to be dissolving, changing before his very eyes, turning gray and wrinkled, then degenerating even further until nothing was left of the once great warrior but a pile of dust under the heap of rocks. Don wasn't sure what Grant's disappearance was meant to signify, or why he'd seemed so happy at the end, but he knew how Grant had been defeated, at least. While the older, stronger man had been plowing through the pine trees, he'd virtually covered himself in pine tar. It hadn't been enough to stop him for good, but it had slowed him down whenever he made a move, especially when that move involved separating any part of himself from something that he was touching. When Grant had torn through the cliffside, the pine tar had stuck him to the rock for just a moment, and by the time he was able to get himself free, it was too late. The rocks had descended on top of him, and the fight had ended. Don could feel something wet covering his back and sides around the object that had struck him and he had a strong feeling that he was about to die. But his accomplishment was truly monumental, as good a final accomplishment as any, he decided, as thinking became harder and his body started to go numb. However, he still felt compelled to fight to stay alive, because there was still something he'd never gotten the chance to do. Don still wanted to become a knight, even there while lying on the ground and slowly bleeding to death. He'd fought and beaten an opponent that had terrified the people of Arran for hundreds of years, and that, Don knew, was an accomplishment worthy of a knight, but somehow it just didn't seem like it was enough. Don wanted the chance to do even more for his people. No, Don thought to himself, though his lips lacked the strength to speak by that point. I can't die. Not yet. I still have to become a real knight. I still have to go back home and live in Troma again with Sharon and the others. I have to meet the princess, the king, and Landry again. I can't die yet. Then, with those final, defiant thoughts, 
Don blacked out. 